when I brought this painting of Infinity 2 into my house, it moved me to a whole new level of awareness. And I know that there is a message in it that I am to, to share with humanity. I know it. And I know that it's the cover of my second book. And I know that it's the focus of the content. I don't know what the content is. But it's all about infinity consciousness because it's a level of, of knowing who we are that is beyond the reality of humanity at the moment. There are individuals on the planet, I'm sure, who understand this, but this is a new message. This is a new message. And so when you decided to film in front of the painting, that's why it touched my heart because I'm beginning to, to know day in and day out how I relate to it and how I am the messenger for it and that I have words and tears that I'm to share and I just I need to trust that it'll all materialize and that I will know what to say and what to write. Uh, what am I going to put in that book? I have no idea. How do you write a book about a painting and about something as as grand as infinity consciousness where we can see the particles of creation, where we know that that's who we are, that we can move into that space and we can move those particles. And that's how we're a creator being. And that's how we do it. So when we have intention, it is the intention moving into that space and playing around with those wonderful dots so that we can be the queen of Sheba or we can be the black jaguar in the jungle or we can move into inner earth or we can go out into Sirius and we can do anything because that's, that's who we are. See, we are greater and grander and bigger than this physicality. This physicality is divine, and I honor it and I love it, but we're more than that, and that's what the painting says. That's what infinity consciousness is, and that's why I had tears in my eyes. Hello, my Juicy co-creators, Lilu <laughs> here. I'm with Juicy Nina Brown here in Santa Fe in, an, in front of an amazing painting Aww. that we're going to speak about in a second. It's very much a painting I know that moves you and touches you. Yes. You're the author of Return of Love to Planet Earth, and you're all about love frequency and, right. and, and, and uh, recoding our DNA mm -hmm. and raising the vibration on this planet. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's very fulfilling to be with you. There is something about your energy that is just loving and Aww. good and beautiful. Wow. Where is that it's coming a from? a love affair happening here. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 so tell us. Um, what, is it, what, what are you feeling? What are you present to mm. right now on the planet? There is a fee when you say, what do I feel? Yeah. What I feel, and very often what I feel when I work, is zero point. Okay. And so what is zero point? Zero point for me is, it's not duality. Mm -hmm. It's not she, she, he, mm -hmm. good, bad. It is that, that blending of both sides of duality right smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. And that is the love frequency mm -hmm. that I am so privileged mm. to be the receiver and transmitter of. Mm -hmm. I am a receiver and a transmitter. And the Are we all? Are we all? Oh, you know what? I only know about me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably absolutely are. Thank you for that wonderful question which has never been asked to me before. I think we are all pure love, for sure, and so why wouldn't we be receivers and transmitters of it? But humanity is still awakening. Yeah, so, 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 so tell us, how do you actually get to this point where you can transmit love? How can we learn from you so we can uh, do that too in our life? Thank you, what a beautiful question. And it 
has a lot to do with those dots behind me. <laughs> Tell us about those dots then, well, however you want to bring us. <clears throat> there, is a, there is a term, adamantine particles, and you don't have to know what that means. Um, particles of creation would be another way to say it, or um, units of consciousness. For me, those particles are the smallest indivisible particle not yet discovered by quantum physics of all that is god source it is the the stuff of what creation is made and when i talk about love for me love has structure and love has a frequency and i felt it i have been in the presence of someone who spoke the most beautiful words of love. I couldn't hear what was being said, but oh boy, did I feel it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that he had transferred these incredible particles of creation in their highest vibrating frequency to my sacred heart. Mm -hmm. And it was palpable. And so what occurred to me is, so too can I. I can do that, mm -hmm. and you can do that. And what do we do when we say grace? Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. I think when we are truly giving thanks to the food and to the nourishment and to the cook and to the farmer and to whatever, that these particles of love and the frequency of love is just gushing out and it is... Um, being transmitted to that food or to you. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening between us. Mm -hmm. That's this love that I feel so strongly to this woman I've never met before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened when that, that gentleman was saying thank you to me. I could feel it. He was moving the highest vibrating particles. Who is this gentleman? His name is James Jarrow uh -huh. uh, from Santa Fe. Actually, he is the painter yeah. of this magnificent painting called Infinity Two. Mm. And when he was saying thank you to me, um, as I say, it was palpable. And that is the frequency that I bring in. It is that very high, very um, uh, thick, um, I think it's the wrong word, but there are just so many of these particles that are vibrating at a high frequency and they come into my crown chakra and into my sacred heart and because I have, by means of a certain process of breathing, um, connected the energy field of the person with whom I'm working, I'm able to transfer those particles of creation to the sacred heart of another. And so why? And the answer is so that by means of harmonic oscillation, whereby the lower vibrating body entrains or joins the higher vibrating body, they too raise their frequency. Mm -hmm. So we are just spreading love all over the place. <laughs> yes, 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 juicy. juicy. <laughs> uh, yeah, amazing. So would you say that only love is real? Oh, that's so beautiful. I think everything is real, e even though I also think that we created it. Maybe that's the answer to your question. I, I believe that, that because of the divinity that I am, and when I say I, I mean you, yeah. because of the divinity that we are, we can move those particles. Uh -huh. And so they are, this is love. This is the painting of love, without mm. a doubt. And that's the vibration you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so what's real? It's, it's whatever I create. That's what's real. What's real is who am I and who are you? That's the core of what's real. And then when you take this um, unit of consciousness or the spark of divinity and you say, Wow, I think I'll play in the field of infinity space mm. and I'll, I'll create me in Egypt or I'll create me on Sirius or I'll be a big black jaguar. It is your question, what is real? It is that magnificence of who we are that's real and what we do with it. Mm. And you're profoundly moved by this 
painting. You often yeah. sit in front of it and look at it and... Well, and I've had other people sit in front of it and it's, for me, as if um, I can move into the canvas. And so it's not this physical body mm -hmm. that does that, but it is the, the me of me, the, the unit of consciousness that I referred to, um, the spark of divinity that is able to, some say astral travel, that's one word, but can go into that space and and play around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> freely. Freely, yeah. So what we're talking about is a level of consciousness that is not discussed and maybe not even recognized. Maybe the awareness, awareness of most of humanity hasn't awakened to this yet. I think we are speaking about a subject that is going to become well known soon, but at the moment I don't think this is well known. That we are, this is my portrait, it's a portrait of me. It happens to be a portrait of you. It happens to be a portrait of you. Because we take this, this vibration, this, this divinity that we are, and we move into the space of infinity and just play around with the creation particles. So I have to say that you are looking very solid, but actually you're mostly space. Mm -hmm. So when people think of infinity, they usually go out there mm -hmm. to infinity. I'm saying go in there mm -hmm. because you are, so is that chair, so is that door. We're all space. Mm -hmm. And what is in between the space? Mm -hmm. Quantum physics has their definition, but I would say go deeper mm -hmm. down to the particles of creation mm -hmm. and then play around with them and move them into this or move them into the chair or move them into my bracelet. It is just your ability as a creator being, which mm -hmm. I believe you are, that can do that. So how do we do that? The most important thing is to know who you are. Mm -hmm. Because Nina doesn't know how to do that. I have no idea how to do that. However, I am not just Nina. And I think the same thing is true with you. You are more than the name, more than the physicality. You are a divine being. You are an individual expression of all that is. So once you accept that, what can't you do? Mm -hmm. So it's knowing who you are first, mm -hmm. most important of all. Fundamental question, who tell are us, you? Tell us about your relationship with crystals. Ah. Oh. It started when there was a channel done by Archangel Michael and he told me I was a crystal singer. And I had no idea what that meant. Apparently in Atlantis uh, and in Egypt there were those, uh, myself included, who toned and were able to activate the crystals such that the frequency from the crystal would uh, have a presence in the room and be a healing device mm -hmm. for those who came for help. So that was the beginning and then, then it's amazing how I get messages like this, then Archangel Metatron said the work that you're here to do would be very much enhanced by means of the Phi Vogel crystals. These are crystals that were cut originally by Marcel Vogel, whom many know and uh, is easy to research. Uh, they're all faceted and serve as, for me, an amplifier and a surge protector. Because when I bring in these frequencies, mm -hmm. which are of enormous vibration, mm -hmm. Um, my physical being mm -hmm. is um, at risk, for sure. And so having the, uh, the surge protector of the crystals mm -hmm. is very important. And they also amplify 
the uh, frequency as it travels and helps in the in the transmittal process. So I love them. People ask me, "Do you have a pet?" And I say, "I have crystals." And you have a big one. Can you show us? You want to see my big crystal? Yes. Okay, it's big. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see it from there. Yeah, we can there see it. There we go. It. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> this is a 144 phi Vogel crystal. It is water clear. And I always ask permission if I pointed at anyone because I don't think he would want to do that without <laughs> asking permission. So um, you have a relationship with him? I have a, 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 a stellar relationship because in many ways the consciousness of the crystal is my consciousness. It bears the same name as my higher self, which is Anaya Ra. And for me, it represents what we're talking about. It is pure love and light. It is love and light with no distortion. It is crystalline, clear compression of everything I do. So when I am in meditation, I join with the crystal and I request that this interview, Thanksgiving dinner, writing my book, always be in crystalline, clear compression with my higher self so that by means of the rhythm of life, which for me is compression and expansion, I will be compressed in crystalline clear compression so that I can expand with ease and grace. And I think that is the true rhythm of life. Thank you for asking. I got to show everybody. Mm. <laughs> so, so what is with crystal? How come it facilitates that? What? Oh, you're going to get into the scientific explanation? Yeah, a little and, bit, yeah. Uh-huh, that's not me. I couldn't tell you what DNA is from a scientific perspective, yeah. but from... Um, the all-knowing perspective? An all-knowing <laughs> perspective and an, and an understanding. When I, when I received the crystal, this particular one, I have many. Mm -hmm. um, Careful with the mic. Yep. Oh, no, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, I wasn't sure whether we were to work together. And when I say we, I, I really mean it. There, for me, is a consciousness in the crystal. <clears throat> so I got out a piece of paper, and this is in my book, and I said to the very large crystal sitting on my table, who are you? Do we know each other? Are we to work together? And if so, why? So the relationship I have with the consciousness of the crystals is very different than what it looks like in a laboratory. Um, it, is, it is a knowing for me such that there is a, um, the best way to describe it is a, a shivering that goes through my body when I know that I've connected. And when that happens, when there is a physical response in my physicality, then I know that we're bonded and that um, the consciousnesses are linked. It's very, it's very beautiful. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. magical mm -hmm. and not very scientific. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is there for you and, right, and thank it's you. beautiful. Thank you for sharing how that's, that's what this, the, the whole Juicy Tour is about. Uh. And it's, it's just expressing what you have you know, there for all of us to get so that we can, for us that don't feel the crystal, we can, uh, we can, we can see what it's like and you can share that. We can uh, get in your world. I love we that. We can get into this with you. And for those who don't have the same relationship with crystals mm -hmm. that I do, take a leap. And if you find a crystal that calls to you in a crystal shop that you have just a little bit more recognition of, take a leap and Listen and maybe even talk and see what happens. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the, the, I love it. Tell us about the recording of the DNA. Um. So you're saying there's a whole part of DNA that we're not using that scientific used to be called uh, junk DNA. And oh, now beautiful. that we're discovering that this DNA could be activated, is that? Two, or two, two answers to your question. Yeah. If you want to uh, go into the DNA first, which is a very good starting point, um, the information came to me from uh, another channel, Lee Carroll, who channels Cryon, who many of you might know, who's been around for about 30 years, 
has actually written a book and the whole subject is DNA and what he is saying and has become my truth is that what surrounds the DNA that uh, scientists know biochemically is they call junk DNA. What I think it is now is a quantum field mm -hmm. and in that quantum field resides for me, my truth, my higher self and my Akashic record which is the knowledge of all that I was, all that I am and will be. And it's it's not up there. And how high do you have to go to find your higher self? <laughs> really? I mean, where are you? <laughs> and I say, I was right down there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all over me. It's it's who I am, and that's what's happening now. This is what the shift is all about. The veil everyone talks about. It's being removed from that quantum field, and we're beginning to remember who we truly are, which is the core of everything. Who are you? Am I just a physical being in my purple shirt or am I able to move those particles? Mm -hmm. And I say, that's who I am. I can do that. I am that great. So are you. So are you. <laughs> yeah. So the work I do is bringing in these particles, the yep. high, high frequency of pure love and light, mm -hmm and I transfer that to another's mm -hmm. sacred heart. And um, as I mentioned a little while ago to you in private, it's uh, an analogy I have of you being a diamond. I see you as a diamond or a crystal that is beautifully faceted. To me, you are that radiant. But humanity is so entrenched in duality that it's as if that diamond is covered in mud mm -hmm. and can't vibrate, mm -hmm. can't be the brilliance that you are. So I don't change you. You are perfection. You are all that is. You are, in my opinion, God. And so my work is to bring in this frequency of pure love and light and just kind of dust you off a little bit. <laughs> but actually, more than that, it's uh, a very strong frequency that helps to, um, the word is recode from Archangel Metatron, but really uncover the brilliance of, of your beingness. So that's the work that I do, and that is the return of love to planet Earth, and it is spreading, and that's what's causing the shift, and that is how I and others are facilitating the ascension and the shift in humanity. I have a last little question regarding uh, <coughs> intraterrestrial being and your relationship with it and how you feel that their presence uh, is part of helping humanity to raise the vibration of this planet. Thank you. And I don't know how much time we have. We don't have much unfortunately because okay, so we'll of it. battery issues. <laughs> we'll do it very quickly yeah. then. Uh, for me, my truth and uh, communication with those inner earth beings is that this is their, this is their consciousness. Mm -hmm. They are uh, on a level of awareness that is uh, not ours yet. Mm -hmm. But because of the return of love to planet Earth and the raising of the frequency of humanity and the spreading of that vibration around the planet, they want to be known and they want to have a relationship with us because it is now safe to do so. Mm -hmm. So that so that what? So that on this planet? So that on this planet, hopefully by, again, the properties of harmonic oscillation in their presence, we also will raise our frequency. And it's all about love. It's all about love. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Nina, it's such a delight to have met you in person. <laughs> and I know there will be many, many more occasions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for taking this time. Thank you for attracting me to do this and very powerful thank you my my profound honor really and thank you so much thank you and share 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 <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, bye.